The Boeing situation, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it, we're having more answers. I think um, I'm going to talk a little bit about vitamin D. Uh, bone health, bone density actually goes up and then peaks during the age and then goes down after, we, after we're 45 or so. But in HIV, what we're seeing is that when we're comparing positives to negatives, the incidence of bone loss is a lot bigger. I mean, it's, it's, it's dramatically different. Uh, we, we're definitely uh, losing bone faster than just um, uh, the bone loss that are related to aging. One, the, probably the only way to find out for sure if you have bone loss is doing a DEXA scan. It's uh, basically a prescription you get from a doctor, a hospital. Usually big hospitals have the machine. Um, it's a tricky situation. It's cheap. If, you know, it's only $130 if you have to pay for it, and many doctors are not writing an order for it. Why? Because we don't have guidelines that say, well, now we're trying, they're trying to change the guidelines for anybody over 50 years of age, HIV positive, should get a DEXA scan every few years. But uh, right now, unless you ask for it, you won't get it. Uh, and if you ask for it, you probably will get it because most doctors, what, what's happening now is that doctors are waiting until you have a fracture to say, oh, let's do your bone density. And by that time, it's pretty advanced. So I really am a proponent, um, um, people criticize this, but I think every HIV positive person, not over 50, but over 40, 45, should get at least one of these tests, a DEXA scan um, prescribed by the doctor, and, um, and just answer that question. People say, well, what am I going to do? How about if I come up uh, very low? I say, well, at least you'll be motivated to do a few things like Working out, exercise actually improves bone density, calcium, vitamin D supplements, and there are some drugs um, that are also prescribed. And if you have low testosterone or thyroid, if you improve that, the, t the hormones, it tends to get better. And there are bunches, of course, you see the ads <laughs> on, on, the, on TV, Boniva once a month, and of course, none of them have been, except Fosamax, have been studied in HIV. But, you know, they're like once a day, so continuous, there's, uh, this is, uh, once a week, this is once a month, and I think this is once a year, it's an IV. But we don't have any data, mostly data on women, but non HIV, but we'll see. And vitamin D is definitely hot. Um, it's the only vitamin that we talk about in, in, stud, in, uh, in conferences. I mean, doctors, you know, you know, doctors aren't very hot on vitamins, but vitamin D is the only vitamin in the past three years that has been, it's been in every conference we've gone to. And uh, all of us, most of us have low vitamin D. Um, white, brown, Latino, blacks, actually the darker the skin, the more chances you have low vitamin D. Um, and you get vitamin D from the sun. You, your skin actually metabolizes it uh, through the liver and the kidneys into active um, metabolic, metabolic um, products. One of them works uh, on the immune system, actually is it's, it's very important for the immune system, for the prostate gland uh, health. And another one, the, another metabolite coming from the kidney works on muscle and bone health and also regulation of bone pressure and blood pressure and insulin production. So vitamin D actually is involved not only on, on bone health, but also immune function and, and metabolic um, uh, issues. So what we're finding out is maybe there's, a, there's some evidence, we're not 100% sure, that some HIV drugs and non-nucleosides in the liver or even tenofovir, viriad in the kidney are interfering with the conversion of vitamin D into these two guys that actually are doing the job of vitamin D. So we have, I think, and it's another thing that, pe that people may criticize me, everybody with HIV should take vitamin D. And I'm going to explain why. Everybody. It's cheap. It's not going to kill you if you overdose. Um, it actually may help you, <laughs> even though we don't have evidence. We don't have placebo-controlled, double-blinded, long-term studies. It's something that is not going to kill you, and you're not going to lose too much money. It's very, it's very cheap. And, and the only way to find out is to do a blood test. Although, as I said, I have doctors that say, I don't do blood tests of vitamin D. Why? Everybody's low. Why, why spend $40 on a test that basically is not really, you know, I just assume everybody is, is, is efficient, which, you know, I think if you're in an ADAP situation, uh, definitely white, white test. But yeah, these are the different uh, levels that, you, um, that your doctor will go for. But, but as I said, every, vitamin D is definitely showing up everywhere. And the most interesting thing that we just got published, it got published um, recently, is that one of the drugs, tenofovir, Viriad, which is part of Truvada, which most of us are taking, uh, it's very rare to see somebody not taking Truvada or Viriad, unless you're taking Epsicon or Cygen or something. 
but uh, most of us are taking that drug. And that uh, varia tends to do something kind of interesting. It's a very good drug. It definitely has worked wonders for us. It does not cause lipoatrophy, facial lipoatrophy. It does not increase cholesterol. It does not increase triglycerides. It's a beautiful drug in every aspect, <laughs> except once a day, except that it may accelerate bone loss. And, um, and, and that's concerning. And what we have found, the thyroid gland has another little uh, glands attached to it called the parathyroid glands that produce another hormone that keep calcium balance in the blood. Every time there's low calcium in the blood, this, uh, these little glands emit this uh, PTH hormone that makes bones degrade calcium to give calcium to the blood. Well, viria tends to affect this, this hormone for some reason. Um, in, in so much so that it tends to increase this hormone. Um, we don't know why, but it increases this hormone. So our bones are releasing more calcium into the bloodstream, and that's one of the potential reasons why we, we may be losing bone, uh, besides vitamin D deficiency, too. And, and, and a study actually looked at that. What happened to, uh, when we give vitamin D to people taking Viria, these actually young people that were given vitamin D, what happened to that hormone? Does it go down? And in fact, it does. For people that have actually low vitamin D uh, blood levels, that, that hormone actually improved, go down. So vitamin D not only is, is something we need to be taking, but it's, it's a vitamin that will reverse, even prevent, some of this effect of viria on, on the PTH hormone that is very important for bone health. So, you know, I'm, one of, I'm a crazy activist. People <laughs> criticize me for things I say. But I think, you know, every bottle of Viria should be attached to a bottle of vitamin D when they sell it. Like they used to, uh, we used to have a drug called Adefovir that was attached to a bottle of carnitine because it would bring carnitine down. And, and that's my opinion. But hey, vitamin D is cheap. You can buy it in the store for nothing, hardly. And uh, do it because there's enough evidence that in a few years we're going to prove that it actually has done something very important.